So I'm doing a video about how to develop colour film from home. I'm going to show you the whole process from start to finish. So first of all I'm going to show you uh, all the kit that I bought to get me going um, and then we'll show you how to develop. Okay, so one of the first things I bought was this uh, Patterson uh, starter film processing kit. I think it was about £50, £45, £50, it wasn't too much money. So this comes with the tank, two reels, uh, some measure measuring cylinders, the film squeegee, uh, two film clips and a thermometer that wasn't very good so I replaced that. So um, yeah, it all comes in the kits. You can get it from, there's loads of places online, Analog Wonderland is where I think I've got mine. So you've got the tank in there. This is a standard size. You can fit two rolls of 35 millimeter in there or one roll of 120. So you've got the film reel, the reel holder in there. That goes on top and seals it so no light gets in and you can pour all your liquids in there. Then that's your agitation stick and the lid of course. So you can agitate the film even with the stick or you can just put the lid on and agitate it. Comes with two of these, two film reels. Um, so obviously you can adjust it. This is 120 size, or you can twist it and close it to 35 millimeter size. Um, I've got two of these ones that come with it, but I find them quite fiddly loading the film. So I bought one that's a bit easier. So this one, if you come closer, I'll show you the difference. So you see with this one, this is what you've got to load it onto these two tiny little bits here, which when you're using the changing bag can be quite finicky. Uh, and this one, obviously, it's much easier to do in the dark. So with the kit, obviously, you've got your measuring cylinders uh, just to measure out the different chemicals. It came with these two uh, film holders. So these are just little clips that you hold, uh, clip onto your film reel to hang up to dry. And it came with this uh, film squeegee, so it's just what you use to, well, I'll show you squeegee the film. And like I say, it came with a uh, thermometer that wasn't very good, so I bought this uh, Heston Blumenthal meat thermometer, which is just a lot better as a digital thermometer, which gives me a more accurate reading. So yeah, so the kit uh, cost me about £50, and then on top of that, I just bought some plastic uh, one litre containers. You know, I've got five of these for, I think, like £8, and they've got these little stops to keep the air from getting in, so they keep the chemicals good. The developer itself, you're not supposed to let it um, get any light on it. I mean, they, they sit in a, a, cup, a dark cupboard anyway, but this one, I've just wrapped gaffer tape around it just to keep it that little bit safe. Uh, we've got a plastic container. This came from the factory shop. I don't know, it had toys in it, I stole it, which, Ikea, all right, come from Ikea. Um, not a lot of money, it's just a plastic container which I use to keep the hot water in the water bath. And then of course I've got a funnel for pouring the chemicals to and from the tank and back into the bottles. And I think that's everything. So all that kit cost me less than a hundred pounds. Um, and then you've got the developing kit. So as I said at the start, uh, I use this Bellini photo kit. Um, there's plenty of C41 colour processing kits out there. This one uh, had good reviews and it's just easy because everything in there is basically ready to go. You've got your developer in there, liquid developer, so it's not powder. You've got your bleach in there, which is ready to go and can actually stay in that bottle. You don't have to put it in any other bottle. You've got your fixer in there and then you've got your um, stabiliser in there. That kit cost uh, I think it's about £30 or just under £30 for all of this. And like I said, I think you can get uh, how many rolls out of it? Yeah, they say between 16 and 18, but I think I did about 16 or 17 with the last kit. So bear in mind, this cost me £30 to get a roll of 120 developed from my labs before. It cost about £10, £11. Um, so after three rolls, yeah, I've kind of already made my money back. Yeah, you have to invest in the initial setup and obviously you've got to invest your time you've got to remember that so if it's something you're interested in you just have to remember you need that initial payout plus every time you develop and scan is it's taking up your time if you don't have time to do that then don't but I'm much preferring 
the look that I'm getting to my scans now, much more so than I ever did from the labs. This is the only kit I have used, I haven't tried the powder kit, but it was just so easy to use from the word go that um, I'll probably just keep using this forever. Um, so this is the developer, it comes uh, 260 millilitres of it. Basically, all of these three you want to make a litre out of. That's why you've got the litre bottle. So for example, that's got 260 millilitres, you want to mix that with 740 millilitres of water and then pour it all into there. So you've got your developer ready to go. Uh, and the same goes for the fixer there. So you've got 500 milliliters in that, and you will, um, that's stabilizer, mix it with 500 milliliters of normal water, and then you pour that in there, and you've got your fixer. And then the stabilizer, obviously, is just what uh, finishes the development process, and it just means that it dries a bit quicker, and you get, you know, less watermarks and stuff like that. And that, this will last you for quite a while. You only need 10 millilitres to every 990 millilitres of water, and then you just keep it again in there, and that will last. And all of these will last all through all sort of 16 rolls. Okay, so obviously if you've got a dark room at home or a room that you can block out any light, you can load the film onto the reel in the dark room and kind of see what you're doing. If you don't have a dark room, obviously you can buy what's called a duck bag, a duck room changing bag, which looks like this. I've actually got a roll of Fuji 400H, which I completely effed up. Um, I basically, I loaded it into the Mamiya C330 I was trying to use a shutter cable, I took one picture and then I wound it and it just kept winding, winding, winding. The shutter was left open and it wound through the whole row, roll of film, exposing the whole roll and ruining it. So I just loaded it again and wound it back um, so I could use it to show you how you would load this in the changing bag, which will be helpful hopefully to people that don't know and it will definitely be helpful to you <laughs> when you come to do this in a minute. I will pay attention. Okay, so obviously you've got your film reel here. This is the uh, spool, spool or whatever you call it, which the reel would go on to. So you can keep that on there in the bag. So what you do is you get this all ready, your changing bag. What the, the only things you really need in there is this, the tank, the lid for the tank. You can use the other lid as well in there, but this is uh, light sealed. You know, there's no light getting into there, so I just keep that and the spool as well. So you put these things into the bag with the roll of film. You've got your sleeves here, your arm holes. You put your arms in. Once you've put all your film in, obviously, and zipped it up. And then you would do it all in the bag. Now, first time I did it, and Becky can vouch for this, it took me a good solid like half an hour <laughs> to figure out <laughs> how to get it on. And, it was fiddly. Now it takes me a minute to do it, you know, after after practice. So, you know, true to its word, practice makes perfect with everything. But I'm gonna show you how to do one in the light, just in case you were wondering. So this is already set up for a roll of 120. This is a buggered roll of 120, so I can show you. So what this is is just paper, it's film paper, there's no 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 photos developed onto this. The actual film is underneath the paper. So in the bag, what you would do is you'd roll it out until you got to the film. So it's usually about now, there you go. The film pops out, that's the film. So this is, this is you don't need this, that's a waste. Rip that off in the bag, get it out of your way because it's a distraction. Now you've got hold of the actual film. Now you've probably got a good, about that much where there's no picture developed onto anyway so you're fine for touching all of this in the bag you know you've got you can touch it you're not going to ruin any of your pictures you then want to get the film underneath there until it hits these little ball bearings so I don't know if you can see there's these little ball bearings on both sides which will help when you want to wind the film onto the reel so you just pull it through until it is stable like such, and it's coming through. And then you see you've got it dangling down like that. If you just hold your thumbs underneath uh, these plastic bits here, and then you're gonna crank it. Can you see that? So you're gonna crank, crank, crank. Keep winding, winding, winding. And you see it slowly loading the film onto the reel. So you keep cranking. Now obviously you can't see what you're doing, but you'll know 
when it stops because it's not going to work anymore and you can see here you've got the bottom of the film now it's stuck on with tape so you just grab the bottom again try not to grab any of here with the it's going to have exposed pictures on stick to the end and then you just pull pull that off you might have excess tape it doesn't matter too much if you can get it off get it off but it doesn't really affect the uh, development at all and then just carry on cranking until it's all on like so so now you've got the film onto the reel in the bag you know there's nothing hanging off it's all safe and then in the bag plop it into the tank like that put the lid on give it a twist and now it's sealed so no lights getting into there so then you can take your arms out of the bag and take it out of the bag and you're good to go okay so now <laughs> now it's your turn okay so i've showed her how to do it she's honestly never done this before but i thought it'd be interesting just to show it from a perspective of someone that's never done it before uh so we've got a an exposed roll of portrait 400 these are all photos of your children so don't mess it up <laughs> um and yeah so she is now going to put all the bits into the bag um and she's going to load the roll onto the reel close the lid and then we're going to get the chemicals ready for development yeah your arms go in the sleeves I suggest getting it sort of up to your elbow just so you're, you're deep in there <laughs> like you're birthing a cow find the film yep and then just roll it out a bit that's it mm -hmm. and then when you feel the film just rip rip the paper so then you've got, you've got the film reel as well. Mm -hmm. Feel for that, keep the film in your hand. Mm -hmm. Feel for them plastic bits at the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then just push it on, that's it. it will, you'll kind of feel resistance from the ball bearings, but what, just push past a tiny bit past that. Mm -hmm. And then let go of the film and just twist the, um, the actual reel back forwards, back forwards, back forwards. That's it. Keep going. And then you kind of feel it give you some resistance. That's when you're at the end. And then just feel for that end mm -hmm. of the film. There's a bit of tape. Just pull it. Just pull the paper bit off. That's it. And then just do the reel a little bit more. Just to get that last bit on. Yep. That's it. You did that quicker than I did. To be fair, all right, you've got the easier reel. <laughs> uh, so yeah, if, if you think that's all well, plop it in the tank. Uh -huh. And then plop the put the lid on and give it a twist. Done. Okay. There we are. Ta -da. Good to go. <laughs> Uh, yeah, film is loaded and ready to go. We will put that over by the sink. So we'll, we'll work in order, obviously. When you're uh, developing film, you go developer first, then bleach, then fixer, then stabilizer. Now, this bleach is all ready to go. You use it, keep it in this bottle, pour it back in this bottle, and it just stays in this bottle um, until you're done with it. So we'll go with developer first. For each, each of these bottles are one litre bottles. Are you listening? Yep. So you need <laughs> to put a litre worth of liquids in all of them. The developer, which is this one, mm -hmm. is the first one you're going to use. How much developer is in that bottle? 260 mils. So how much water do you need? <laughs> 740. 740 mils. So you've got a jug in front of you. Mm -hmm. So fill that up with water. To not shock the developer as well, I'd suggest using not hot but warm water, so just run the hot pack for a bit. Got your warm water, 740 millilitres? Yep. Correct. Right, so all you need to do is pour your developer into the developer uh, bottle, this one, and then pour the water in as well. Give it a little bit of a shake, just so it's nicely mixed. 
That's the next you need to do the fixer. And it's same situation, 500 milliliters uh, is in that bottle. Mm -hmm. So you need to make one liter. So how much water do you need? <laughs> 500. <laughs> Quick math. <laughs> Last one is stabilizer. Um, you need 990 milliliters of water. It's basically just water. It's just kind of like a cleanser. And you need 10 milliliters of that little stabilizer. So you've got this tiny one that come in the kit. So you should be able to pour 10 milliliters into that. 10, yeah? 10 milliliters, yeah. Science. How exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so now we're gonna develop the film and I'll talk about development times and stuff. But like I say, you only need to do that every time you need a new developer, which is about 16 to 18 rolls. So it depends how much you develop, but it lasted me since March. Mm -hmm. And we're now mid-June. So I, don't, I guess I don't shoot that many rolls. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's get going. Yeah, plastic uh, container like this that will fit all the chemicals in. Fill it up with hot water from the tap and one boiled kettle, which gets it to a nice temperature. Um, once that's done, uh, leave the chemicals in there until it reaches 38 degrees. Now the main thing that you need to be 38 degrees, this is the most important thing, is the developer has to be 38 degrees or as close as you can get it, sort of plus or minus 0.2 degrees. It's got to be quite spot on. The other chemicals though can be anywhere between 32 to 38 degrees. So what I'll do is I'll leave them all in the water. I'll show you in a minute because Becky's going to do it until the developer is at 38 degrees and then I'll take them all out of the water. So obviously the developer will go in first and whilst the uh, development is happening the other things are cooling but it doesn't matter that they're cooling because they can be anywhere between 32 and 38 degrees. Besides they won't cool that much within the space of you know, three, four minutes that the development is happening. <laughs> right can, you, can you lift that? Use them guns. Mark right, train right. <laughs> <laughs> You're just jealous I've got bigger guns than you. Uh, and this is the pikey way of developing film. But it works. With the uh, Bellini Photo C41 kit, you get obviously instructions in there. Super easy, I mean I've gone through pretty much everything already, but you also get this handy little table for um, development time. So it tells you the pre-warm, the developer, the bleach, the fix, what temperatures they should all be at. So obviously 38 degrees for the developer, and then anywhere between 32 to 38 degrees for the bleach and the fix. Um, the only thing that changes time-wise is the development time. So one to four rolls, you're looking at three minutes, 15, five to eight, three minutes and a half, eight to 12, 345, and then 12 to 16, four minutes. So you kind of have to keep count of how many rolls you've done so you know to add that extra 15 seconds for the development time. Uh, I've got to duck down because you're a little bit shorter than me. So <laughs> crouch down. Um, so obviously we're getting the temperature. I've got the GoPro as well, so I can do two angles, it'll be fancy. So we're getting the temperature up to 38. This is uh, of the developer. So you just leave it, kind of keep mixing it about, giving it a swirl, getting the temperature to 38 degrees. As soon as it hits 38 degrees, we're good to go and we'll get everything out. One handy tip, I've not crouched down again, I don't know. <laughs> Always have a, um, a rag for wiping down surfaces and drying and stuff and cleaning it. You don't want to be using like your house tea towels and, or flannels that you're going to clean your face with. I keep this one specifically for uh, film related projects. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. I won't let you use my tea towel. Because she'll shout at me. <laughs> so yeah, we're up to 36.1, so we're getting there. Again, once it hits 38 degrees, We'll just take it all out and we'll start the process. Um, timings, I'll put my timings in the description, but they're on the instructions. It's really easy. So you have um, three minutes, 15 for the developer, 
and then go straight to the bleach for 45 seconds and then the fixer for three minutes and then a stabilizer for 30 seconds. What I do, obviously because you have to agitate it, is um, I'll try and get all the developer in within 15 seconds and then when it hits 15 seconds I will agitate it for 15 seconds and then when it hits 30 seconds stop and then every 30 second interval agitate it for 5 seconds after that. Uh, which sounds more complicated than it is. You should also preheat your um, tank just so the film isn't shocked. Now you can either you can do one of two things. You can pre-wash the film if you want to. It's not necessary where you pour warm water in there just to warm it up. Or I just dip the tank into the water bath um, for like a minute just to warm the whole thing up so it's not shocked. Okay, so we're at thirty-seven point six. Almost there. Give it one more mix. 37.8, 37 37.9, 38 degrees. Okay, so we're at 38 degrees, so whip it straight out, get the thermometer out. I then get all the other chemicals out because it doesn't matter if they start to cool down. And uh, yeah, it's best to keep them in order that you're using them, so it'll be developer, bleach, stabilizer. No. On my developer, bleach, fixer, then stabilizer. Go. Yeah, so you need to pour it in, and then when you, as you're pouring it in, start at the same time. Do I need the funnel? Not to pour it into there. No. So okay. ready, start, and pour at the same time. Go. Okay. So now agitate it. So yeah. So try and have all the chemicals in within the first 15 seconds. When it hits 15 seconds, agitate for 15 seconds. Then when it hits 30 seconds, leave it for 30 seconds until you get to a minute. And then every minute, minute and a half, two minutes, two minutes and a half, you want to agitate it for five seconds. So I'm going to get ready to agitate. Yeah, agitate. And how long do I do this for? You tell me, I've said it a few times. Three minutes? Three minutes and... 30? 15 seconds. 15 seconds. God damn it. <laughs> so at three minutes, you're gonna to wanna to agitate one more time and then get your funnel ready to pour it back in at 3.15. Right, now funnel, go. Take the agitation stick out. Funnel goes into there. there. And then I pour that. Now. That's it, give it a shake. Perfect. So now you want to stop the clock and reset it. That's it. Get the developer out of the way. You want to do this process relatively quickly. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and then bleach for 45 seconds. So again, you wanna have this in within 15 seconds, ready to agitate for 15 seconds, when the timer hits 15 seconds. Does that make sense? <laughs> Go. Find it. Go, so now agitate until 30 seconds. So, so that's it, stop. Mm -hmm. It is! You're making it out to be more intense than it is. And then... At 45 seconds, you pour it back in. Don't start tilting it yet, leave it to chill. And then that's it, stop. 45 seconds, pour it back in. See the colour it comes out, obviously that's the cut coming off the film. It stinks. It does stinks. What does it smell like? <laughs> okay, keep going, what's next? I don't know! What is next? Fixer! Fixer, how long for? Three minutes, you're not Three paying minutes. attention. Reset it. So reset. Steady, go. Same again, every 30 seconds you agitate for five seconds. There we go. So yeah, it's, it's relatively easy, she's making it out to be harder than it is. Developer, you do it for the time stated. It's between three minutes and 15, or 3.30, 3.45, etc. You try and get the chemicals in within 15 seconds. When it hits 15 seconds, I agitate for 15 seconds, and then every other 30 seconds for five seconds. 
Um, it sounds very complex. It sounds harder than it is. Obviously, once you understand what you're doing, <laughs> it's not complicated. When the timer hits one minute or one minute thirty or two minutes, agitate for five seconds and stop. So, because you know you're doing this for three minutes, when it hits two minutes thirty, mm -hmm. which is the last time you'll agitate it, you then get everything ready to pour it back in. It's a stop. Yep. And pour it back in. Uh, and then, and yeah, you'll see the fixes up there now. A nice orangey, ready colour. Yeah, so you can reuse these for 16 to 18 rolls um, and they're fine. Obviously each time the colour's going to get darker and darker, hence why you have to do it longer and longer. So essentially the film is now developed and ready to go. The stabiliser is the last process just because it helps clean it up a little bit and um, helps it dry a bit quicker and stuff. So we will do the last step. Uh, this just goes in for 30 seconds. So now you're gonna get a film out. I'm gonna swap on this sheet go broke. To this. Take out the oil. Let's see what we got. See whether we copped it up or whether we did it right. Ooh. So that looks pretty developed to me. If you grab the uh, just grab the end there, you can pull it off. Just gently pull it up this end. It all comes off. Looks good to me. And now squeegee it. Ta da! Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it, obviously. Um, it was just to show you, obviously, how I developed the film, the kit that I use, and I thought I'd drag Becky into doing it just to show you kind of how easy it, it actually is. You know, that's the first time she did it, and obviously she had me over her shoulder kind of helping her, but it's not that difficult. Um, personally, I really enjoy doing it. Um, you know, a lot of the time I'll just have a, I'll have a beer and develop a couple of roles, and I find the whole experience quite relaxing. Yeah, I'm gonna do a video next about how I um, scan and edit my negatives. I digitize them with a camera and I use Negative Lab Pro and I've had a few people ask me to do to show them how I do that. So I'm gonna do a video for that as well. And uh, for now, I'll show you the pictures from that role that Becky just developed to uh, finish the video. So uh, yeah, hopefully see you in the next one. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> <laughs>